In the super extended article I wrote about Until Dawn, I was especially critical about Josh's plan and how it let the two people most directly responsible for his sister's deaths completely off the hook. While the other five characters are tormented to various degrees, Mike and Jessica, the two villains of the previous year, get to spend a romantic night in an isolated cabin canoodling by a roaring fire. Of course, my complaint only makes sense if my initial assumption was correct, that wanting revenge for the deaths of his sisters was Josh's primary motivation for everything he sets up at the cabin. There's evidence to suggest that this isn't the case, and that Josh's motivation was different both from what everyone assumed and what he actually said. In fact, Josh might not even be fully aware of exactly what's motivating him in the things he does. After all, given his interactions with Dr. Hill, we know Josh to be severely unstable. So, first off, let's take a look at what would have happened if Josh's plan had worked out perfectly, which almost all of it does. Step one, send Mike and Jessica away for a night of love. Step two, steal Emily's luggage and get her and Matt out of the way, delaying them with locked gates and scaring them with a pig's head. Step three, freak out Chris and Ashley with ghost effects. Step four, overpower Chris and Ashley and lure them out to the barn. Step five, force Chris to fake kill him with a saw style trap. Step six, scare Sam into a chase, then tie her to a chair. Step seven, put Chris in a situation where he'll have to fake kill Ashley if he wants to survive. Step eight, reveal that it was all a prank and have a good laugh at their expense and then edit the footage into a movie and post it online. So, looking over the plan, we've got to ask a simple question. Who was the main target of Josh's sinister machinations? Just looking at the steps, three people get it the worst. Chris, Ashley, and Sam. With Chris and Ashley having far more traumatic experiences than Sam does. And considering that Chris is the one placed at the controls of the saw cart, and Chris is the one given the pistol, it's safe to say that ultimately, Josh's schemes were almost entirely about punishing Chris, specifically. But why? When Josh explains his plan, he says that he was making a movie with thrills and romance and drama and horror. But that explanation doesn't really hold water. If he were really interested in making a compelling movie, obviously Mike would be the star of it. He's handsomer, he has leadership qualities, and he freaks out really easily and in an entertaining fashion. Most importantly, He's the man most directly responsible for the death of Hannah and Beth. So torturing Mike would not only make a better movie, it would get the revenge he theoretically wants. Mike is so obviously the lead character of the story that Josh has to sideline him immediately so that he won't pull focus away from Chris. If Josh cared about making a movie, Mike would have to be the star of it. Josh gets revenge and a great movie all in one little package. But he doesn't do that. The movie, Revenge for His Sisters, that's not what Josh cares about. Based on his actions, the things he cares most about are A. Tormenting Chris B. Testing Chris's feelings about Ashley C. Scaring Sam Now, let's deal with C immediately. It makes sense that Josh would want to punish Sam. She was supposedly Hannah's best friend, and yet she allowed the prank that got Hannah and Beth killed to happen. Of the entire group, her betrayal is by far the most severe, so it makes sense that she deserves a scare. But what about Chris? He had literally zero involvement in the prank. While you could theorize that he was involved and it was his job to keep Josh busy, the way he reacts when he sees the video and notices how involved Ashley was suggests fairly strongly that he really was completely in the dark last year. So if tormenting Chris wasn't about revenge, what is it about? To answer that, we have to look at the second thing he's obsessed with, testing Chris's relationship with Ashley. In the first trial, no matter which way Chris pushes the lever, the saw goes towards the Josh dummy. But notably, it stays locked in place once it's there, so that later on, Josh can find out who it was that Chris picked. Obviously, that information is important to Josh. Then, in the second trial, he wants to test the exact same thing. How devoted Chris is to Ashley, forcing him to decide who should get shot lest they both be killed by the slowly lowering saws. Once we eliminate the deaths of his sisters as a motive, that's wrapped up in the Sam stock and chase, there's only one motive that can explain the rest of Josh's scheme. Jealousy. That's right, everything Josh does, he does because he loves Chris and is furious that Chris is with Ashley. Yes, this seems crazy, since there's so little justification for it in the story. But if you look at the interactions, 
some patterns begin to appear. He's very interested in Krish's relationship with Ashley, talking to him about it, alternately encouraging and belittling him, basically focusing on figuring out just how serious the relationship is. Then, when the ghost tricks start, he leads them to a diorama of the prank, except all of the dolls are naked, visually suggesting an orgy that everyone but Josh and Chris were invited to. Then he shows off the video to remind Chris that Ashley is just as culpable as the rest of the gang in the twins' death. This would obviously sting all the more intensely. After all, as Josh's longtime best friend, Chris was likely closer to the twins than anyone but Sam. So while Josh doesn't blame Chris for their deaths, obviously the fact that he's still involved in a will-they-won't-they -they flirtation with one of the people involved in the prank would make Josh's jealousy all the more painful. Now, to be clear, I don't think this is Josh's conscious motivation. It's possible that he doesn't even realize that he's in love with Chris. But when the man started crafting a scheme that, theoretically, was about getting revenge on the people responsible for his sister's deaths, there must have been a reason that the plan he came up with only involved punishing Chris for choosing Ashley over him. One of the ways he punishes Chris is by forcing Chris to literally choose Ashley's life over his own. This gives Josh a chance to do all of the screaming about betrayal that he wants to. In real life, he doesn't have the courage to confront Chris about his feelings, so he instead creates an entire movie just so he can, ideally, make Chris feel just as hurt as he was, and ideally, show Chris just how bad Ashley is. This is a theory, of course, as I've pointed out, there's not a ton of textual support for it. But then again, for a guy supposedly getting revenge for his sister's death, he sure does jump to dishonor their memories with his Ouija game. And when it's time to reveal his plan, he just goes back to talking about it being a prank. Now, on one level, this prank talk is supposed to be a dark callback to how the rest of the gang acted like the fact that they were just pulling a prank was supposed to make them less culpable in Hannah and Beth's deaths. Fundamentally, though, only two people were supposed to have a terrifying night. Sam and Chris, with Ashley being collateral damage in Chris's ordeal. For Sam, the motive is obvious. As Hannah's best friend, it was her job to stop the prank, or at least comfort Hannah when the prank was over. She did neither, and so Josh puts her through a terrifying chase while naked, save for a towel. As for Chris, well, there are many possible motives there. As the one person in no way involved in the prank, there's few motivations that could explain Josh's fixation. If you take love and jealousy out of the mix, then all that's left is Chris continuing to have a crush on Ashley, someone that Josh hates which is bad from Josh's point of view, but likely not bad enough to warrant making him the focus of most of the night's festivities. Especially considering Sam is right there and her sins are much worse based on this raw criteria. Add in jealousy and a love Josh can't admit to himself though, and suddenly his rage at Chris makes perfect sense. And the logic of everything he does over the course of the game, sending the other four away without any real punishment, locking up Sam and absolutely wrecking Chris's night, it all falls into place. Have I just made an entire video designed to prove that a huge amount of Josh Chris fanfiction is canon? Yes, I, I have done that, but I've only done it because it turns out this whole time, the fanfiction writers were right. I've been the Hypnobject Guru, thanks so much for watching the video. If you haven't yet, be sure to like and subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons Marissa, Desire, Eduardo, Joanne, and Brian for your support. If you'd like to donate to the channel and support further videos like this one, check out the Patreon link in the description below the video. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered in a future video, just mention it in the comments section. I'll see you back here for the next thing, but until then, au revoir.